Mississippi State, the national champions, destroying Vanderbilt 9 0. WCBI News at 5 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. We are live from Left Field Lounge Lofts inside Duty Noble Field on the Mississippi State University campus. Courtney Robb is joining me here. We are here as the fans are beginning to arrive for the College World Series celebration, and it is a big one, Courtney. Absolutely, Andra. <laughs> Fans are expected to march with this parade that's anticipated to get started in just about half an hour. The celebration will kick off right here about 6.15. Let's go and get a look at what that parade route is going right, to look like. The parade lineup begins at Fire Station 1. That's over by Little Dewey. The parade will turn right onto University Drive. The parade route follows University Drive through the Cotton District. That goes past Two Brothers and then to the Bend and Bulldog Burger. Crossing the bridge moving on to campus. They will then go to the Hunter Henry Alumni Center and down the hill. The parade then turns left right onto College View Drive and enters the complex next to the hump and right to the Palmero Center, Andrea. And a big thank you to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson because the weather is turning out to be yes. perfect here at Duty Noble Field. Now, right now we are expecting that the ceremony honoring the Bulldogs will begin about 6.15 right here at the stadium. The trophy will be on display. Everybody's excited to get a look at that. And this evening's event will honor Bulldog baseball head coach Chris Limonis and, of course, his championship team. You can expect to hear this evening from the coach, from MSU President Dr. Mark Keenum, Starkville Mayor Lynn Spool will also be speaking, MSU Athletics Director John Cohen. We're also told that Mississippi, um, uh, the governor of Mississippi, Governor Tate Reeves, also will be speaking here this evening. Parking is free, that's great. So you can go to the MSU website to see where parking will be available and look for all of those road closures. Now this event is free and you can bring your own snacks and beverages into the park this evening. Now this one uh, was for the fans, young and old. They've been waiting and dreaming about this. Courtney, you know it. You've been Absolutely, covering this team a while. Yes. And now they're ready to celebrate. Oh, they sure are. And our Winston Reed is currently in the Cotton District at Bulldog Burger. Winston, tell us what the atmosphere is just like over there right now. Guys, I am live from the hub of the celebrations. That's right, the Cotton District. And the celebrating has been going on since Wednesday when the Diamond Dogs delivered the first ever national championship in its school's history. That parade tonight that will be taking place here on University Drive is unprecedented. It's the first of its kind because the diehard fans here in Starkville have never been able to celebrate a championship like this. And actually, we're expecting about 30,000 people to be on campus tonight. And on the Twitter page, there's a Duty Noble Field is already packed. So, I mean, we, it's, you already know, we're in Starkville, we're going to hear cowbells. Uh, we're actually hearing cowbells right now. Uh, people are lining up on the sidewalks, getting ready to enjoy this, this fun time, this fun parade. I mean, it's just exciting times when you can celebrate your first ever championship. And, of course, tonight we're going to have all the great coverage for you. I'll be live with John Sokoloff at Duty Noble Field at 6. If you're in the Starkville area, feel free to come take part of this parade. I mean, it's going to last about 45 minutes uh, heading down to Duty Noble Field, grab you some Bulldog Burger, get you a drink, and just have a really good time. Reporting live in Starkville, Winston Reed, WCBI News. Winston, thanks so much. We'll check back in with Winston a little bit later on in the show. Now, the flight from Omaha to Starkville was about two hours, but if you talk to Mississippi State fans, they'll say the wait to get to this point, a national championship, really has been a lifetime for all of them. And so it's no surprise that this championship celebration has been called so soon. Yeah, I'm sure fans can say that the wait felt never ending. Our Stephen Tippo was with fans as the party began in the Cotton District. He has that story. was the moment last night when Mississippi State fans realized they were national champions. 
The Bulldog faithful packed into bars and restaurants in Starkville's Cotton District to watch Game 3 of the College World Series poured out into the street to start a celebration that has been years in the making. Every dog has its day. We finally got ours. Finally got ours. I've been growing up a state fan ever since I was in diapers. We did it. We did it. My grandparents have been waiting for this for like 50 years. I'm a third generation Mississippi student and I'm proud to be a Bulldog. As the Diamond Dogs raised the College World Series trophy, it meant the end of years of frustration and heartbreak for MSU fans. This is for the women's basketball team. This is for every time we've worked our butts off trying to get that national championship and we've gotten this close. To have it come as the baseball program being the, the national champion is just a dream come true and I know how excited everyone is about that. And while some fans started celebrating, others got to work. As soon as the last pitch hit, we started printing our shirts and we had someone at our headquarters drive this morning, bright and early. The manager tells me that close to 2,000 championship t-shirts were dropped off this morning. But nearly two hours later, half of those were gone. Manager Ann Gray Flowers, an MSU grad, was in Omaha at the game and flew back overnight just to make sure they could provide Bulldog fans with their long-awaited championship gear. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened in Mississippi State history. and. We are supplying shirts and we got to get them out because everybody wants them. With a victory parade set for Friday, the celebration isn't stopping anytime soon. In Starkville, Go dogs. Stephen Pimpo, WCBI News. The Mississippi State baseball team arrived back in Starkville just on Thursday, Andrea, and were greeted by so many fans waiting to congratulate them. However, those fans also to get a fantastic look at the hard work with that championship trophy. We talked to a few of the fans as they waited for the plane to land. They all say this moment has been a long time coming. Take a listen. Something I didn't know if I'd ever get to see, and so kind of came out of nowhere in a way, but um, I'm just really excited for everybody that loves Mississippi State. It's extremely special to me. Mississippi State holds a special place in my heart, and it always will, and I'm just so proud of those boys. Oh, it's everything. It's wonderful for our town. It's wonderful for Mississippi State. We just love them. Oh, that's outstanding. We waited so long to be here. That's what's funny. We're out here at the airport, and somebody said, uh, they got delayed an hour, we got to wait. Everybody, oh, everybody's great. I said, guys, we've been waiting 150 years for this day. We can wait one more hour, so it's a great day. Great day for, it's a great for the Mississippi State fan base. And, and, and no, to me, I think it's most deserving for this fan base to win this, this national championship, to get one. As you would expect, this place is a sea of maroon and white, as is all of Starkville. And if there's a Mississippi State fan anywhere, they're rocking the maroon and white. Leading up to the celebration, though, local businesses tell us their merchandise is already beginning to sell out. T-shirts and buttons and hats are flying off the shelves at stores here. At Be Unlimited in Starkville, orders have reached close to 10,000 in just 24 hours. Customers are buying 5 to 10 T-shirts per hour, they tell us. Everybody's here for the parade, just ready to get their teas to celebrate. We've probably already sold about 8,000 shirts since we had our the first order happened right after the game started. We wanted to come down uh, today uh, after the national championship and just celebrate in Starkville, uh, enjoy the parade this afternoon. So we're so happy to be here. So if you hadn't gotten out to get your merchandise yet, there's plenty to go around. As a matter of fact, Be Unlimited and Bookmark Cafe will continue to sell that merchandise. And Mother Nature is a big fan of MSU baseball. She cleared out the weather for this afternoon's festivities. Right now, a live view in Columbus. We were just in Starkville. No issues there. No issues across the board here. Some drier air is beginning to infiltrate the area. We are kicking off the showers down to the south. Just a few blips left on radar here. And northerly winds kicking up and that is going to eventually lower the humidity. Right now it is warm and steamy mid to upper 80s high humidity as we go throughout the evening. Later on tonight down into the 60s. Your holiday weekend forecast is looking very good. Your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes as WCBI News at 5 continues. You're watching WCBI's News at 5 with Andrea Self.
All right, welcome back to left field loss at Duty Noble Field here on the Mississippi State University campus. We're waiting on the championship celebration to begin. And listen, it can't get any more American than baseball and hot dogs. And the hot dog has an interesting history. Here's Michael George with a frank discussion. When it comes to 4th of July food, mm, it's the top dog. It's just wonderful. The hot dog is as American as it gets. One with mustard, ketchup, and onions. And one with sauerkraut and mustard. And Lloyd Handworker should know. My grandfather was Nathan Handworker. That's right, the Nathan of Nathan's Famous. A Polish Jewish immigrant, Nathan started a humble hot dog stand right here on Coney Island back in 1916. He came with no English and just enough money to come to Ellis Island. German immigrants brought Frankfurters to the U.S. in the 1800s, but it didn't become an American symbol right away. Nathan gained customers when he decided to drop his prices to just five cents a dog. Once the Depression rolled around, that's when the business started taking off because you could feed a family a four for, you know, under 50 cents. Pretty soon, everyone was coming to Coney Island for a dog. The sidewalk out here was lined with people pushing in to the counter as the boardwalk was packed. As time passed, hot dogs became synonymous with American culture. At the cookout, the baseball game, and of course, that 4th of July tradition, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. 74. It's hard to say what makes the hot dog so special. It's portable and it's quick. High quality meat on a bun. But one thing is clear, after more than a century. These are great, it's been a long time since I've had meat. Really uh, good. Yeah, it is good. It's still an American classic. Michael George, CBS News, Coney Island. All right, you things can get a lot more fancy than a hot dog in Starkville. Let me tell you, locals and visitors here will tell you that this town continues to grow as a great location for great food. From our friends at Eat With Us, John Bean and Robin Fant, to Ty Tim's with Eat Local, to the newest chef in town. And we are so happy to join from Taste Chef Jeff Thornsberry. Thank Thanks you so much so for much. being here, Jeff. Yes. This is awesome to have you here. Great. We're super, super excited to be part of the community. Well, Taste has been open now for a few weeks. Uh, uh, just at two. Just at two weeks. Two weeks, that's How's right. How's it going so far? It's fantastic. The turnout and the, the support of the community has been unreal. What can people expect for people who haven't been there? I hear there's a lot of talk about it. And everybody's going, I want to <laughs> go to the new restaurant. What can they expect? Uh, we're just a restaurant. Uh, uh -huh. I think our biggest thing is that we, we want to celebrate life's victories, uh, whether it be an afternoon off or a national championship. That's you know, kind of cool. It's, yeah. you know, a, a beer and a flatbread or uh -huh. a date night, and uh, you can make it anything you want. Speaking of flatbread, you've brought some flatbreads with uh, yeah, you. We're going to get have. a shot of those. Tell us, starting at the top, what you brought with you. Up here? Yes. Uh, so this is just a classic margarita. It's about as classic as you get. Uh, then we did a little bit of a scampi, a little basil pesto, some roasted shrimp, fresh parmesan. And then this is our smoked chicken, uh, roasted peppers, caramelized onions, some baking jam. And then uh, it's on our crust we make in-house. And, uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in it. We've been working on it for a super long time, and we think we finally got it right just in time for everybody. And you've got just a variety of the flatbreads, right? Yes, we do. Okay. One of the other things that you want people to know is that you are going to be using fresh local ingredients, aren't you? We are. We are. As much as possible. We, we reach out. We're trying to grow. Uh, everybody around us. We want to take everything that's around and show it to everybody like they've never seen it before. Well, let me just tell you, Jeff, you're a man after my own heart because I love myself some french fries. Yeah, I, th I think you we have nine different on the menu. Wow. So what? tell me about this one. So this is our Cajun. So we have some Louisiana uh, crawfish tails, mm -hmm. some local andouille sausage, uh, three pepper cheese sauce, some crystal hot sauce mayo, and then uh, just some classic shoestring fries. Is anybody else planning to have any of these? Because I'm going to just go ahead and touch one. <laughs> <laughs> Very yummy. All right, there's so we've got another one here. Tell me if these look like sweet potato fries. Are no, these? Those aren't, so they okay. look like it. They're, they're mm. deceiving. These are our buffalo fries. So mm -hmm. a little buffalo sauce, a little blue cheese aioli, some bacon, some smoked chicken, a little, little scallion. So everything you would get in like a classic wing flavor, just kind of done our way. Super approachable, easy to eat, snack on at the bar. It's perfect. Love it. You also do a fantastic brunch, right? We do, we do. So Saturday and Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, a little different from everybody else because uh, we were out 
from the, we're offering that Saturday sort of brunch. Yes. And uh, so we hope, we hope to get everybody out there and do that. So it's a lot of fun. Oh. And it's a whole different menu than everything else. So. Right. And it's one that will change a little bit, right? Yes, it will. All the menus will change. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for being here. Great to have you in Starkville Thank and you a for part of the me. wonderful food scene that's here already. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, Jeff Thornsberry from Taste. Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson is going to have your full forecast when we come back. Stay with us. WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Let's get right to it. This holiday weekend, your 4th of July looking great. Saturday, low humidity, 86. Sunday, the 4th of July, 89. And then early Sunday morning, 60 degrees, a great start. Maybe a few stray storms Monday afternoon, but aside from that, we're looking pretty good. We had some showers around here earlier, some thunder too. Drier air is coming on in. Some puffy cumulus clouds left, but most, if not all, of the rain officially done for the day. There's a big area of high pressure up there across the Great Lakes that will continue to usher in some dry air. If you're heading down to the coast, there will be chances for storms all weekend long, but around here in our area, we are looking great. Here's your hour by hour future cast. You can see Saturday afternoon, no issues whatsoever. As we get on into your Sunday afternoon, no problems. Now, Sunday night, 8, 9 o'clock, clear skies, fairly light wind, perfect weather for those fireworks. Great weather in Vernon right now there at Durham's Pharmacy. A few clouds lingering here in Louisville, Mississippi, but we are gradually drying out the atmosphere. Our bank first camera in downtown Columbus and in downtown Tupelo looking very nice on our Friday afternoon, our getaway Friday, just before the holiday weekend. Now, temperatures are still pretty warm, mid to upper 80s right now, high humidity. Later on tonight, down into the mid 60s, northerly winds will continue, and that humidity level will continue to drop as we go throughout the course of the overnight hours. Tomorrow, we start out in the mid 60s, by the afternoon in Columbus and really everywhere else, somewhere in the mid 80s with mostly sunny skies and northerly breeze, very comfortable. Here's your AccuWeather 70 forecast. So your holiday weekend's looking fantastic. Get those plans ready to go. Next week, starting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, more humidity, better rain and storm chances, but that is after the majority of this holiday weekend. There's your forecast. Stay with us. More of the show after the break. WCDI sports coverage of the College World Series in Omaha is brought to you by Bank First, the Claiborne, Midway Marine, and Visit Columbus. Welcome back for our celebration here at Duty Noble Field. Joining me, former Mississippi State Bulldog, current Green Bay Packer, Elton Jenkins. How good is it for you to just be back here in this atmosphere right now? Man, it feels good. Like all the fans, the atmosphere, you know, everybody here. Everybody um, going crazy right now, so just bringing the first natty back to Starville, it's a big, it's a big um, step for us. We mentioned, you know, it's that first national championship, and this fan base has been waiting for something like this forever. How important is it for this fan base? It's good. You know, we got diehard fans, fans that's always loyal to us. So bringing a natty to the to the Starville community and things like that, I feel like it's a big step in not only baseball but every sport. Well, we saw how fantastic the Maroon and White Faithful traveled to Omaha. You as a player know just how often these fans show up and show out for y'all. What can you say about just the Mississippi State fan base? Oh, yeah, I love them. They always, they're for us. My time here, 14 through 18, they always traveled. You know, they always been at the games and things like that. So, yeah, I love those. I love our fans. We call them family here. So, fans, family, same thing. So, yeah, I really love them. I know you were telling me that you like to come back to Starkville every summer or so just to come back. Why come back to Starkville and just the area every single year? Because I feel like this is where everything started for me. You know, um, coming from Florsdale, then coming here and just seeing myself grow every year and things like that. So I feel like it's where it started. So I want to come back and, you know, do things for the community, do things for myself and just, and just come back home my, to my second home. For you, does it feel like? You can check a box off knowing that Mississippi State got this national championship. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm um, very proud of those guys. They went down there, did what they supposed to have been did, and I'm very proud of those guys. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We'll have more for you coming on the way. Don't go anywhere. The celebration continues right after this. We'll be right back. WCDI sports coverage of the College World Series in Omaha is brought to you by Parker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, George Sherman Plogears, and H&R AgriPower. Alright, let's check back in with our Winston Reed as the parade gets underway. Oh. 
The dogs are here. The parade has kicked off. There is your national champions right there. It's an exciting moment here. A sea of maroon and white on University Drive. Such, it's the first of its kind. Such an exciting time. Cowbells are ringing. I can barely hear it. I can barely hear it, but it's, <laughs> this is just amazing. We're gonna have more on this tonight at six. Back to you, Courtney and Andrea. Hail State. Your CBS Evening News is next.